Hello everyone. So you may have seen on Facebook or my YouTube this little flip book. So it's like a little brag book and it was just a larger version of my flip book that I did for my memory box which was part six of um, that playlist. And I said that it would be a great standalone project, which you could make larger. Because what you've got is spaces for your 4x4 and 6x4. So I went ahead and made one with the Harmony Papers from Nitwits. And it's a great little project, especially for beginners, because you're not using any chipboard or you're not building any spines or anything. So it's a nice, easy project, useful. And as I said, it was just one little score line difference between my original and this one. So I was asked, would I uh, make a tutorial for this one or would there be one? And I wasn't planning on it, but what I'm gonna do is take advantage of using this one to show you some tips and tricks on the mats and layers and show you a cheat method for the brad closure dies from cool cats so this one was quite a little nice traditional floral one and i liked the uh, family get together type wording down the side and it goes through so i thought what i'd try with the next one then is to go a little bit different to go a bit more modern and a bit more youthful and i've gone for loving life from Nitwits. So this is full of cameras and smiles and wording and things like that. So what you're going to do is choose a highly patterned one and a planar version so they offset each other. So the whole album was made using just two of these printed sheets. I also used uh, three pieces of A4 220 GSM black cardstock for this one. So I'm going back to the black. In this one I use craft. So you could use any one you want really. Because we haven't got any chipboard, I'm not using my tape or anything this time. Well actually I am going to use my tape because I've got the black, but you don't have to. And I'll show you that later on as well. So three sheets of whatever colour you want your base to be. And then five sheets to make your photo mats, which I've already begun here. So again, this was another 220 GSM from Creative Expressions. They're um, coconut white and they're bright white are usually what I use. But you don't need it to be 220 GSM, but it does give you a bit of extra um, thickness to your album. So as I said, the, the cutting list is pretty much going to be exactly the same as my original one. And my album is four and a half by six and a half. So then my photo mats become six and a quarter by four and a quarter. And then it fits a six by four photo in the middle. So we're just working on those quarters. So I went up half an inch. So what I've done here is because my A4 cardstock is eight and a quarter wide, I've just cut it up four and a half down. And then I've got another page then from underneath at four and a half. So that was four and a half by the width of A4 or eight and a quarter. If you want it to be a little bit longer, if you're using your American size, it's fine. Just make sure when you come to do your paper pieces, you make them a bit wider. And then I've got five pages this time, whereas I only had three last time. And these then are the same as my original, four and a half by seven. So if I grab my scoreboard. Because my pages are going to be six and a half long, I'm going to score at six and a half. Now in the original, I'd only go up an eighth. But for this one, I'm going to go up a quarter. So that was the only difference between the original and this one and the amount of pages. So what we've got now is just a bit of a shorter flap. 
So we're going to compensate later with our papers. And then each of the pages I've scored at six and a half. Three, four, and five. Yeah. And that's as hard as the scoring gets as well. <laughs> so you see it's a really easy project. Nice quick one, great for beginners, nothing complicated at all. So my main piece and my five pages. So let me grab my score tape and this is three eighths of an inch score tape so it's just a little bit shorter than half an inch so it fits perfectly inside there i did make the mistake of buying the half inch once and it's a bit more tricky because you've got to get it exactly on to fit inside the score line. so the three eighths is brilliant because it gives you a little bit of leeway and just makes things a lot quicker and easier. So you can see the supplies here are very minimal. Hardly any tape, hardly any of the, my black cardstock. Okay, so with my wider one, I've got two score lines. So what I'm gonna do now, is grab my score tool and I'm going to fold that first one. Now I don't need to burnish too hard here because I'm not going for those 180 degree angles. I'm only going for sort of 90 degree one. So I don't need to burnish too much there. But with my pages, I actually do want them to lie flat. So because I've put my tape on already, as I burnish, I'm actually burnishing that tape on as well. So I'm giving them a good score. Try and get them nice and flat. Now you might notice that I'm actually not burnishing, uh, not burnishing, I'm mitering in my corners. I don't need to this album. I found it easier to keep them. Okay, so they're my five pages and my base. So with the base, I am gonna bring in my corner rounder. This is optional if you haven't got one, no worries. Or if you've got your decorative dies, like your Cool Cat whisker ones, you could cut something out there. But for ease, I'm just going to use my quarter rounder. So I'm using my large one on this. And what I'll do, I'll use my neck size down when I come to do my papers. Now, you can have your book with your flap on the left and the pages open to the right, like I did my original one. Or you could have it that way and open that way. Up to you. So I'm going to stick with on the left hand side. So I'm going to take my first page and I'm going to peel back just a little corner like so. And then I'm going to stand my album up. I'm going to line up this corner which hasn't had the tape taken off yet. So I can move it freely because it's not going to stick. And I'm using my table to line it up nice and flush. And then I'm squeezing the bottom with a little bit being exposed, holding everything in place. And tease it out. And now my album is nice and flush along the bottom. And what I'm going to do is just keep going like that. So I'm going to take the next one. It doesn't matter which side you take off. So again, I'm going to lift it up. 
I can move it around and when I'm happy I can take it off. So you want to take your time here because you want to get it nice and flush because you can actually see it visible on the end there. So you want to take your time just to get flush or if you're using the black and you have got some construction tape you can hide it which is what I'm going to do this time. So again I'm just peeling it back folding it outwards so I can peel it off just getting it nice and flush Two more to go. And the last one. So this will be the front cover. Fold it out. And the fifth page. So that is the base of your book all made. Now, as I said, if you are using black and you've got some black construction tape, you can then just put it half on and half off there, flip it over and cover. Like I said, you don't have to do this. And in my original one, I actually made it into a feature by highlighting it with some Distress Ink. So I'm just gonna place it on the bottom and cover it up. So that's an optional extra. But as I said, what I did here was I actually took some vintage photo Distress Ink and it looks like pages of a book or something. So, if you're using a different colour to black, don't worry, go for it. And that's it. So I told you that it was pretty much the same as my original one, just with that extra little score line change there. And so I said this would be more for tips and tricks. So what we're going to do is bring in my Brad Closure dies from Cool Cats. In my original one, I used the ones from the envelope die, which are little circles with holes in the middle, again from the Cool Cats. So I've shown quite a few times in the Amazonia uh, box tutorials how I did them. So I thought I'd show you something different with them. So again, this is their um, die storage. So what it is, is a great little stand, which you can put on your desk. Great for your little ones, and it folds up as well. I haven't decorated mine yet, so I'm waiting for a project where I get a page left over that I really like so I can cover this. And there we go. So I said, those are the ones I used the first time from the uh, policy envelope die set. And this time, I'm going to use my Brad closure one. So it it cuts a circle with this little extra flap and a score line there with two holes. And you get some mats and layers as well. So let me get those out as well. And I said I use a cheat method for these. So I'm going to show you my cheat one. So to do the brad closure, first of all, I've got to uh, cover my flap. So I'm going to use my cameras there. So I'm going to use my plain paper, which I've already cut. So this now measures one and a quarter by four and a quarters. And I'm just going to glue it down. Okay. 
So I'm not going to glue my base one down, but it is six and a quarter by four and a quarter. So with the base die, what you're going to do is you're going to cut four of these out of your base colour. So in my case, black. And this is how they turn out. One, two, three and four. And you will also need then to cut four of your decorative pieces out of this. So what I did was I actually went over my cameras. So I've cut four sort of camera type circles. There's four of them as well. So these were designed to be used with brads. So you'd poke these holes out. Oh, move out the black away. So you poke out those holes and what you do then is put your brads through there. Okay. But sometimes I forget and I haven't put um, the brads in because you need to put the brads onto the paper. So if you've forgotten, this cheat method is really good because what you're going to do is we're going to glue just the edge of our flap. Let me just bring in my ruler and I'm going to measure how far in I'm coming so I can do both. Now you could just do one in the centre, but I'm going to do two today just to show you how I line mine up. So what I do then is I decide how far in I want to go. So this side is in line with the one and then my score line is lined up with the paper, which I'll come to closer to the camera to show you that in a second, once it's dry. Let me bring another piece of paper underneath so you can see. So what I did, I lined my ruler with the edge and I lined that bit up with the one and where it comes here for the score line, I lined up with my paper. I'm going to do the same at the top. So I'm just putting the glue on the flat bit and let me just measure an inch. Look a bit equal. An inch there and an inch there. So that's my two bad bits there. So I'm going to strengthen it by doing the same on the inside. So again, I've got my one and a quarter by four and a quarter. And you'll notice I've rounded off the edges and I've gone around the edge with some black distress ink as well, just to hide that raw edge. So I use my medium corner rounder this time. So I'm gonna put my paper down and then place these on top. Before I do that, it'd be very good if I actually put my magnets in. Wouldn't be the end of the world because what you can do is put it under the paper anyway. But because I got two, I don't need to, to be as strong as usual. So I'm just going to... Put a piece of score tape. And my magnets are 0 0.5 mil by 10. So I usually use 10 or 12 mil in my projects. So half a millimeter means you barely see any bulge behind your paper or your cardstock. 
And then I'm just going to take my second one and line it up. Okay. And this other one. Yeah. That's holding it down. There we are. So that's my brad closures in. And as you know, now we've got magnets behind it. I'm now going to drop a magnet on. Put some score tape on top and with the other one. Take off the backing tape. I'm just going to close my book. My magnets are now lined up. So I can take that large one now. Remember this was four and a quarter by six and a quarter. Just open it up and burnish from the back. So that's the dies finished with, but I said this was a cheat method because we've got those holes where the brads was gonna go. So what I've got is some four millimeter black brads, uh, not black brads, black pearls. And I'm just gonna drop some glue on those four holes. And it look like I've used some brads, but what I haven't done is added any bulk behind my papers. So it's a flatter way of using them. So I've got some glue here showing for now, but it will dry clear. So it looks like I've used brads to hold in place, but I haven't. So let's add a couple of cameras. Again, I've gone around them with some black distress ink. I'm being really careful because I was Pearls haven't. I usually I would have added them at the end. But I wanted to do it as I was explaining it to you. There the camera brat closure. So I'm gonna just put it aside to dry for a second. And we'll start on our photo mats. Now for my photo wallet or flip book, I have chosen a mixture of six by four and four by four photo wallets. And as you can see, just to cut up the design a bit, I've done some doodling. So I'm gonna show you some tips on the doodling. Some, some people have asked about how I do it. So I said, I've got a mix of six by four and four by four photos, so I can get my paper in between, but you could make it with just six by fours and not have any more papers there. I think just having the difference makes it a bit more interesting. So my photos, I said, are six by four. So I made my photo mat a quarter of an inch bigger, so they're six and a quarter by four and a quarter. And my four by four photos are four and a quarter squares. So I've got five of each. 
and I got my doodles prepared on these ones. I've got two left to do with you. So if you haven't done your doodling before, what you can do is, move this out of the way so I've got some space, cut a four by four and a six by four, or use your photos, and place it in the middle. And what you're then gonna do is just draw a line in between. Uh, when you naturally stop, just do a dot and stop. So you can do short ones. As soon as you start getting wobbly, just stop, put a dot, do a little dash, and down. Now the idea of this is to not be perfect. You don't use a ruler or anything, just go freehand. Down, dot, down, dot. And then just turn it around. And the last one. And down. So that piece just sort of helped you keep it in line. Now some people say, oh, I haven't got a steady hand. Well, actually that can work for you. Because sometimes I quite like the wobbly line. So when you've got a wobbly hand, you're going to get more waves and things, which actually works. Let's put it back in place. And eventually you will do this without even thinking. And you will just race around without using your templates. Okay, so those are my mats made. So those two are my wetter ones, so I'm going to put them aside for now. So what we're going to do now is just glue them in. So, for strength on my cover, I like to put a 6x4 in there. That will just make the front, as I said, stronger. It will add that bit of strength, which you want. Because if we did the 4x4 four four there and a piece of paper, you would get that little join. which can be a little weak at that point. Okay, so that now has made a nice strong cover. So what we'll do then is balance it out with a four by four on this side. Then the center piece Again, we're going to keep the same height. So my centerpiece is at four and a quarter tall. And if you want them touching, you're going to make them two inches. Or if you want a little gap, you're going to make them one and seven eighth, which is what I've done. So it's just under two inches. So I've got that there. So let's go for the plane. And again, I got all these out of my two A4 pieces. So what I did, let's get my A4 piece. I cut a piece for my front and back covers out of each that way. And this smaller piece here came from there. And then all these extra bits now came from there. 
so it's very economical and also means I can make a load of different looking ones using the same kit because I've only used two. So there's um, the 4x4 and a piece just under 2 inches, so 1 and 7 eighths. And as you can see, this is why I was talking about the join there because you haven't got anything apart from the black there, which is why I put my 6x4 there. So what you can do then is put a 6x4 again there or we're going to put a 4x4 there and you can put your paper there but I'm going to keep it going. You will have a little bit of flop in there but it's not too bad at all. You just don't want it on your, uh, on your cover to be doing that. You want your cover to be as strong as you can. Bit of glue. So I used my plain one last time, so I'm going to use my camera ones this time. It's going to go there. So I want a 6x4 one. So now here, let's go the opposite way again. Balance it out with a smaller one, the four by four. So we did a camera, so this time I'm going to do a, a plainer one. And Camera one. Oh, I've left one out. <laughs> Am I going to rescue it? I think so. I think then I've got a photo mat left over. Fingers crossed. Yes. That was a close one. See if we've managed to rescue everything. I think it's going to be okay. There's a little bit of glue visible there, but that. We'll dry clear. Phew. And 
there we go. That's our photo book done. Just got one more piece to add on the back. Slide flat, and there we go. Another flip book, this time made using Love in Life. So there's one made with the circle closures, and here's one made now with those cheat brad closures and magnets. So, of course, now you can. Decorate the fronts as much as you want. You can also decorate the inside a bit more, add some embellishments. You could cut out some cameras from this kit and make sure then when you glue it on that you only glue on this side so that you can tuck your photo underneath the camera. Add some more embellishments onto the front, onto the back if you want. But a nice, easy beginner project. Also, if you wanted to expand it a bit more, you could go in and add some pockets or anything you want. These Brad Closure ones work nicely as well on your pages. So you can lift them up and tuck things in and just drop them down with a magnet, which I've done in some other albums. These could be pockets so you can tuck stuff into. Just don't go adding too many flaps and things because we have got just a fold here rather than a spine with a space. Okay. So nice easy project, no chipboard, nothing like that. Just a few pieces of patterned paper and a few pieces of cardstock. So if you do have a go at these, Remember, they will fit into your uh, memory box, which I've made, those Amazonia ones. So you could make two of them and drop them in to have a nice bigger folded ones. Or a standalone project, or drop into your albums as well. So thanks for watching. Have a go. And head over to Facebook and share your designs with me in Paper Crafting with Paul, which I'll add in the links below. And show us your versions. If you're looking for some of the dies, I'll also drop in a link to the Cool Cats website as well. So you can get some really nice, interesting closures. Photo mat dies, which are brilliant. Would have worked nicely in this if I'd made it a little bit bigger. And some nice, maybe a belly band dies loads of different ideas on how you can add interesting touches to your albums and pages. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all again soon.